Hi everybody, and thank you for coming. Okay, um, I'm very excited and very nervous to be talking here today because it's my first time presenting something in English. So, why this presentation? Um, I discovered Spark some time ago, and uh, I have found it very useful and easy for large for those large scale data processing. So, um, I would like to share my experience with you all. Um, first, um, I will start by introducing the concept of machine learning. Then I will explain the Spark framework and its ecosystem. And following this, um, I will show you some code um, for a recommender system um, using Spark and MLib. Just a few words about me. So my name is Lutwin Probst. I work at Citizen Data, um, a startup based in Brest, and um, the startup is specialized in collecting, storing, and analyzing sensor data. Um, I'm also um, the leader of the Duchess France Association. I don't know if you know Duchess France. Do you know Duchess France now? Okay. Um, it's a group of, uh, that connects women in IT and it aims to give more visibility to female developers and uh, hopefully inspire, inspire role models. So, first, uh, machine learning. So, is anyone familiar with the concept of machine learning? Okay, cool. Um, so, machine learning, or ML, uh, can be viewed as um, programming by example, so um, you will learn from example, from experience. Um, in fact, oh, sorry, in fact, uh, ML is all around you. Um, you get into contact every day with it. Um, for example, Facebook uh, recommendation, Twitter followers suggestion, or Amazon recommendation. And um, if you take a look at the diagram, uh, the first step is Data, data collecting, so um, you need to, you not want to have um, necessarily a lot of data, but just um, good, good data. So, um, step two is um, create a model, and for that you need algorithm to create, to learn from your data and create the model. And step three, uh, with this model, you make prediction. Um, prediction like recommender, recommender system or sentiment analysis um, and so on. So just remember about machine learning. Um, so most, most of ML algorithms are iterative by nature and it's very important for the rest of the presentation. So keep it in mind when you use um, ML algorithm, you want to reuse data. Now, um, today in the big data world, uh, Hadoop MapReduce and HDFS are highly dominant for large scale data processing. And just to recap, um, Hadoop is a scalable, reliable, um, distributed, distributed, <laughs> um, okay. Um, distributed um, cluster and um, HDFS is a Hadoop file system. It's a storage system, and MapReduce it, it's a pattern to parallel computation. So um, MapReduce. Just I won't be talking about the MapReduce pattern in good details, but just take a look at the diagram and note that. Um, the read and write stage are very, okay, it's read, read, write, read and write again, and it's very time consuming, okay? Um, it's in the same way, um, if you use HDFS with um, iterative algorithm, um, you have also this read and write stages, and it's still time consuming, so, okay. We need to push limits, and it, okay, it's not a formula about Spark. It's 
just um, the mathematical definition of the limit. It's a joke. And yeah, I know. But some people ask, what is the formula? So I just, okay. Um, okay, so with Hadoop MapReduce framework, the way to reuse your data is to write it on an external storage like, like HDFS, okay? But it's time consuming, it's, it's not efficient. So this is one of the motivation behind the creation of the Spark framework, okay? To develop a framework which work very well with data we use. And the other goals of the Spark framework are um, not, um, not be limited to the MapReduce pattern, okay? We want more flexibility and we want to keep the fault tolerance. So no, now uh, Spark. Um, in few words, Spark is a fast and general engine for large scale data processing. And it's, uh, Spark started as a research project in, at the University of California in Berkeley in 2009. It's an open source project coded in Scala. And more details. Um, Okay, so um, maybe the main property um, is the processing in memory, but you can also use uh, the on-disk processing. And Spark is compatible with Hadoop, okay? So you can add Spark on the top of Hadoop. Uh, Spark is faster than Hadoop and it's more flexible. Um, by this, I mean that, of, uh, of course, you can use the MapReduce pattern, but Spark provides other um, programming, other functions than MapReduce, so it's more flexible. And Spark has two main abstractions, RDD for resilient distributed data sets and shared variables. Um, shared variables, okay, there is two types of shared variables, broadcast variable. Um, it's, um, for example, if you've, you, you've got a large SQL data, um, it's, it's too big, so you can use the broadcast variable. And um, you set, your data set is um, become a variable, a readily variable, and it sends across all the node of your cluster, and it, it sends in memory. And accumulators, it's just to accumulate, uh, for example, as a counter for errors. Now, um, resilient distributed data set. Um, um, RDD is the immutable collection distributed. Um, um, RDD has partitions, and these partitions are sent across the node of the cluster. You can process on heat, um, you can process uh, on in parallel, and you can control the persistence, so you can choose memory, disk, or both. Um, you have uh, two operations on RDD, uh, transformation and action. Um, an action create another RDD because it's immutable, okay? And a transformation is lazy. So, and action, an action returns a value after running the computation. So, if you, um, if you use the transformation, if you want to run your computation, you need to call an action, okay? And the last point is uh, fault tolerance. Um, if you lost a partition of our RDD, it will be rebuilt automatically using Lineage. No, um, okay, you won't push your data into Spark and you can use text file, sequence file, and any other Hadoop input format, like HDFS, Cassandra, MongoDB. Um, it's completely compatible with Hadoop, 
or HDFS. Um, you can also retrieve your data from Google Cloud Storage or, or Amazon S3. And about Cassandra, um, Cassandra developed their own RDD, so you can use it uh, directly. Now it's just the Spark data flow. It's just to recap all what we, we've seen. Um, so to the left, you've got your data, uh, which come from external storage, and you push them into Spark. And the first things to do is to create an RDD, okay? On the diagram, RDD is a box, orange box, and the small um, orange boxes are the partitions. Um, you can apply transformation, for example, map, filter, and if you want to send your, the partition across the node, you need to apply an action like count or persist. And uh, at this moment, you can choose uh, the persistence, so memory or disk. And once um, your partition are located on the node, you can continue to apply transformation and action. Okay? Um, now, uh, if you want to use Spark, you can use it with Java, um, Scala, or Python. And for Scala in Python, you've got an interactive, interactive shell, so it's very useful for quick feedback or um, interactive testing. To finish the part about Spark, um, I would I would like to show an example, the word count example. It's like the hello world for MapReduce. The code is in Scala, but it's okay. Um, okay. Um, I have a text file with word, and I just want to know how many times each word appears in the file. So, the first, um, the first, uh, the first things to do. Uh, is to create a Spark context. Uh, the Spark context um, represents the connection to the Spark cluster. After that, not after that, but um, for the Spark context, you need to create a Spark conf. The so Spark conf is just all information about your application. Okay? And um, then you want to load your data, and for that, you just need to use the text file. So um, here the text file creates directly an RDD. So data, the first line, this is an RDD, okay? Um, the second section is about word count. Um, in the first line with flap map, um, I just say that um, each word is separated by space, okay? So just I just pass in my my file. And the second line with the map function, um, it's a map step of the map reduce button. So for each word, I attribute one. And then I apply reduce by key. So here the key is the word. And I just add for each word how many times it appears. Okay? And at this moment, there is no computation because it's lazy, okay? If I want to run the computation, I need to call an action. And here my action is the cache method. So when I call cache, um, okay, it uh, runs the computation. And just to finish, it's, um, I just want to keep words which appear more than three times. So I use a filter function, and then I count how many words. Okay, so now I would like to talk about the Spark ecosystem. Um, Spark includes four components, Spark Streaming, MLib, Spark SQL, and GraphX. And this framework, um, um, we can, you, you can combine it together. 
in the same application. So first, Spark streaming, okay? Uh, it's a component from the stream processing of live data streams. Okay, how does it work? So um, you take your data from sources like Kafka, Flume, or HDFS. Then um, Spark streaming receive your input data streams and divide it into batches. Um, you can choose the window of the batch and then, uh, so each batch is a D stream. This is an abstraction in Spark streaming. And each D stream can be viewed like a sequence of RDD. And Spark, um, you can send it into Spark and the process continue uh, as uh, before. Um, then Spark SQL. So, um, with Spark SQL, you can use query expressed in SQL, IVSQL, and Scala to be executed using Spark. So, um, the abstraction here is a schema RDD. Um, it's similar to a table in a traditional relational database. Uh, then GraphX, it's just a component for graph and graph parallel computation, and it, in, it includes um, graph algorithm. And to finish, MLlib. So um, this is a machine learning library. So um, MLlib contains all common algorithms for regression, classification, recommender system, clustering, and optimization. So um, the first part is finished. Now, um, okay, I hope you're more familiar with Spark and machine learning, so I'm going to show how to use um, Spark and MLlib for ML. But before that, I just want to mention other ML libraries. Maybe, do you know MATLAB and R? There are languages which permit data manipulation and analysis but it's not very useful for distributed computation. So um, you can use um, MAUT. It's an open source project encoded in Java. Uh, you can use it uh, on the top of Hadoop, and it includes um, all common ML algorithm. And scikit-learn, it's um, coded in Python, and it includes uh, ML algorithms too. So, why MLlib? Um, because MLlib is directly included in Spark, so um, we'll, you will have all benefits from Spark. I mean, scalability, uh, in-memory processing, and uh, speed. And you can also use MLlib with other components um, of the Spark ecosystem. So, no. It's a time for the example. So um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the recommender systems. And um, here is an example about um, a recommender system for movies. So um, um, collaborating filtering is commonly used for recommender system. And yeah, um, I choose the alternating list square. This is an algorithm um, from the family of collaborative filtering. Okay, here the philosophy. So um, on the diagram, you've got a matrix as a user item weighting matrix, okay? Um, each element of the matrix represents the rating for a given user and for a given movie, okay? And you won't fill the missing entry. And for that, okay, the philosophy is to estimate the user factor matrix and the movie factor matrix, okay? To the right. So um, I use this algorithm and my data are like the picture. So um, each line is a tuple with an user ID, movies ID, and rating. 
So now um, I will use Amalib. Um, the first step is to load and parse the data. So I will prepare the data to run my algorithm. And um, just to recap, uh, it's uh, very important because don't remember that you will create a model from your data. So you, you need to choose the good data. So here data is a RDD, and, but I need to create a rating, a RDD of rating. So it's the second part of the code. So ratings here is a RDD of rating. Then, um, so you want to create a model from your data, but you want to know if your model is good or not. So you need to validate your model. And for that, a good practice in ML is to split your data set into two, a training set and a test set. So here I just split the data set and I want to find the best possible model. So I want to iterate on my data. That's why um, I use the cache method to pass the data. Here I use the specificity, the specificity of Spark, so in-memory processing. So, okay. And now I just use the API of MLlib with ALS and I train my model on the training set. Um, I choose uh, 20 iterations, but you can change the, par the parameter to find the best possible model. And this is the um, next step, evaluate the model. So um, yeah, I just want to find prediction from my model with my test data set. And I want to measure the mean square error. So mean square error is used, is used to validate a model with the alternating least square. So to have the best a possible model, I want to have the smallest mean square error. So here you can iterate and change parameter to find the best model. Okay. And to finish, um, the, um, I want my recommendations. So I just have to apply the um, method recommend product. Here it's for the user number two and I want 10 movies. So, yeah. Okay. So now I would like to talk about performance. Um, okay, it's clear that the Spark is more efficient than Hadoop MapReduce for in-memory data processing. But sometimes you can't use um, in-memory processing. So you must use a disk. And the question here is, OK, how fast a system can sort 100 terabytes of data on disk? And this is a comparison uh, between Hadoop MapReduce and Spark. So here, with um, 10 more machines for Hadoop MapReduce, um, Hadoop MapReduce need three times more than Spark, okay? So if you want to process your data on disk, Spark is still faster than Hadoop, yeah. And if you want more details about this, there is a link with the source. Um, and now this is performance um, of Spark um, with Amalib uh, versus Maud. So, um, as you can see at the diagram, um, um, yeah, uh, Spark with Amalib is scalable and faster than Maud. Okay. So, um, it's um, past the, the end. And now, um, so um, to conclude my presentation, um, I just want to read there 
reiterate the most important thing I would like you to take away. So um, Spark is a fast and general engine for large scale data processing. Um, so it's faster and more flexible than Hadoop. You can use Spark on the top of Hadoop. Um, you can use um, processing in memory, but you can also use the processing on disk and it's still faster. And Spark has a great ecosystem with Spark streaming for live data processing, Spark SQL if you want express SQL queries, uh, GraphX for Graph, and MLlib um, for machine learning. And if you need to um, if you have use case with iteration, if, if you want to reuse your data, um, like in machine learning, you can use MLlib and you can use the in-memory property of Spark. So I hope you enjoy the presentation and I hope you will try Spark, maybe. <laughs> and this is the end. Oh. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Yeah? yeah. Oui, yes. <laughs> 